The barn was very large. It was very old. It smelled of hay and it smelled of manure. It smelled of the perspiration of tired horses and the wonderful sweet breath of patient <clears throat> cows. It often had a sort of peaceful smell, as though nothing bad could happen ever again in the world. It smelled of grain and of harness dressing and of axle grease and of rubber boots and of new rope. And whenever the cat was given a fish head to eat, the barn would smell of fish. But mostly it smelled of hay, for there was always hay in the great loft up overhead, and there was always hay being pitched down to the cows and the horses and the sheep. The barn was pleasantly warm in the winter when the animals spent most of their time indoors, and it was pleasantly cool in summer when the big doors stood wide open to the breeze. The barn had stalls on the main floor for the workhorses, tie-ups on the main floor for the cows, a sheepfold down below for the sheep, a pig pin down below for Wilbur, And it was fun of all sorts of things you can find in barns. Ladders, grindstones, pitchforks, monkey wrenches, scythes, lawnmowers, stone shovels, axe handles, milk pails, water buckets, empty grain sacks, and rusty rat traps. It was the kind of barn that swallows like to build their nests in. It was the kind of barn that children liked to play in, and the whole thing was owned by Fern's uncle, Mr. Homer L. Zuckerman. Wilbur's new home was in the lower, lower part of the barn, directly underneath the cows. Mr. Zuckerman knew that a manure pile is a good place to keep a young pig. Pigs need warmth, and it was warm and comfortable down there in the barn cellar of the south side. Fern came almost every day to visit him. She found an old milking stool that had been discarded, and she placed the stool in the sheepfold next to Wilbur's pen. Here she sat quietly during the long afternoons, thinking and listening and watching Wilbur. The sheep soon got to know her and trust her. So did the geese who lived with the sheep. All the animals trusted her. She was so quiet and friendly. Mr. Zuckerman did not allow her to take Wilbur out, and he did not allow, and he did not allow her to get into the pig pen. But he told Fern that she could sit on the stool and watch Wilbur as long as she wanted to. It made her happy just to be near the pig, and it made Wilbur happy to know that she was sitting there, right outside his pen. But he never had any fun, no walks, no rides, no swims. One afternoon in June, when Wilbur was almost two months old, he wandered out into his small yard outside the barn. Fern had not arrived for her usual visit. Wilbur stood in the sun, feeling lonely and bored. There's never anything to do around here, he thought. Oh, okay, so here the pig starts to think. He walked slowly to his food and sniffed to see if anything had been overlooked at lunch. He found a small strip of potato skin and ate it. His back itched, so he leaned against the fence and rubbed against the boards. When he tired of this, he walked indoors, climbed to the top of the manure pile, and sat down. He didn't feel like going to sleep. He didn't feel like digging. He was tired of standing still, tired of laying down. I'm less than two months old and I'm tired of living, he said. He walked out to the yard again. When I'm out here, he said, there's no place to go but in. When I'm indoors, there's no place to go but out in the yard. That's where you're wrong, my friend, my friend, said a voice. Wilbur looked through the fence and saw the goose standing there. You don't have to stand that dirty little dirt, little dirty little yard, said the goose, who talked rather fast. One of the boards is loose. Push on it, push on it, push, push, push on it, and come on out. What, said Wilbur? Say it slower. At, 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 the risk of repeating myself, said the goose. I suggest you come on out. It's wonderful out here. Did you say a board was loose? That I did, that I did, said the goose. Wilbur walked up to the fence and saw that the goose was right. One board was loose. He put his head down, shut his eyes, and pushed. The board gave way. In a minute, he squeezed through the fence and was standing in the long grass outside his yard. The goose chuckled. How does it feel to be free? She asked. I like it, said Wilbur. That is, I guess I like it. Actually, Wilbur felt queer to be outside his fence with nothing between him and the big world. Where do you think I'd better go? Anywhere you like, anywhere you like, said the goose. Go down through the orchard, root up to the sod. Go down to the garden, dig up the radishes. Root up everything, eat grass, look for corn. Look for oats, run all over, skip and dance, jump and prance. Go down through the orchard and stroll in the woods. The world is a wonderful place when you're young. I can see that, replied Wilbur. He gave a jump in the air, twirled, ran a few steps, stopped, looked all around, sniffed the smells of the afternoon, and then set off walking down through the orchard. Pausing in the shade of an apple tree, he put his strong snout into the ground and then pushing, digging, and rooting. He felt very happy. He had plowed up quite a piece of ground before anyone noticed him. Mr. Zuckerman was the first to see him. She saw him. Mrs. Zuckerman was the first to see him. She saw him from the kitchen window, and she immediately shouted for the men. Homer, she cried. Pigs out. Lurvy, pigs out. 
Homer, Lurvy, pigs out. He's down there under the apple tree. Now the trouble starts, thought Wilbur. Now I'll catch it. The goose heard the racket, and she too started hollering. Run, 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 downhill, make for the woods, the woods, she shouted to Wilbur. He'll never, never, never catch you in the woods. The cocker spaniel heard the commotion and ran out from the barn to join the chase. Mr. Zuckerman heard, and he came out of the machine shed where he was mending a tool. Lurvy, the hired man, heard the noise and came up from the asparagus patch where he was pulling weeds. Everybody walked towards Wilbur, and Wilbur didn't know what to do. The woods seemed a long way off, and anyway, he had never been down there in the woods and wasn't sure he would like it. Get around behind him, Lurvy, said Mr. Zuckerman, and drive, drive him toward the barn, and take it easy, don't rush him. I'll go and get a bucket of slops. The news of Wilbur's escape spread rapidly among the animals on the place. Whenever any creature broke loose on Zuckerman's farm, the event was of great interest to the others. The goose shouted to the nearest cow that Wilbur was free, and soon all the cows knew. Then one cow told one of the sheep, and soon all the sheep knew. The lambs learned about it from their mothers, the horses in their stalls in their barn, picked up their ears when they heard the goose hollering, and soon the horses had caught on to what was happening. Wilbur's out, they said. Every animal stirred and lifted its head and became excited to know that one of its friends had got free and was no longer pinned up or tied fast. Wilbur didn't know what to do or which way to run. It seemed as though everybody was after him. If this is what it's like to be free, he thought, I believe I'd rather be pinned up in my own yard. The cocker spaniel was sneaking up on him from... From one side, Lurvy, the hired man, was sneaking up on him from the other side. Mrs. Zuckerman stood ready to head off him and started for the garden. Now Mr. Zuckerman was coming down toward him, carrying a pail. This is really awful, thought Wilbur. Why doesn't Fern come? He began to cry. The goose took command and began to give orders. Don't just stand there, Wilbur. Dodge about, dodge about, cried the goose. Skip around, run towards me, slip in and out, in and out, in and out, make for the woods, twist and turn. The cocker spaniel sprang for Wilbur's hind leg. Wilbur jumped and ran. Lurvy reached out and grabbed. Mr. Zuckerman screamed at Lurvy. The goose chased, cheered for the goose cheered for Wilbur. Wilbur dodged between Lurvy's legs. Lurvy missed. Wilbur and grabbed Wilbur and the Lurvy missed Wilbur and grabbed the spaniel cocker spaniel instead. Nicely done, nicely done, cried the goose. Try it again, try it again. Run down hills, suggested the cows. Run towards me, yelled the gander. Run uphill, cried the sheep. Turn and twist, honked the goose. Jump and dance, said the rooster. Look out for Lurvy, called the cows. Look out for Zuckerman, yelled the gander. Watch out for the dog, cried the sheep. Listen to me, listen to me, screamed the goose. Poor Wilbur was dazed and frightened by the hullabaloo. He didn't like being the center of all the fuss. He tried to follow the instructions his friends were giving him, but he couldn't run downhill and uphill at the same time, and he couldn't turn and twist when he was jumping and dancing. And he was crying so, so hard, he could barely see anything that was happening. After all, Wilbur was a very young pig, not much more than a baby, really. He wished Fern was there to take him in arms and comfort him. When he looked up and saw Mr. Zuckerman standing quite close to him, holding a pail of warm slops, he felt relieved. He lifted his nose and sniffed. The smell was delicious. Warm milk, potato skins, wheat middlings, Kellogg's cornflakes, and a popover left from the Zuckerman's breakfast. Come, pig, said Mr. Zuckerman, tapping the pail. Come, pig. Wilbur took a step towards the pail. No, 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 said the goose. It's an old pail trick, Wilbur. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. He's trying to lure you back into captivity. He's appealing to your stomach. Wilbur didn't care. The food smelled appetizing. He took another step towards the pail. Pig, pig, said Mr. Zuckerman in a kind voice, and began walking slowly toward the barnyard, looking all about him innocently, as if he didn't know that a little white pig was following along beside him. You'll be sorry, 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 called the goose. Wilbur didn't care. He kept walking toward the pails of slop. You'll miss your freedom, honked the goose. An hour of freedom is worth a barrel of slops. William Wilbur didn't care. When Mr. Zuckerman reached the pig pen, he climbed over the fence and poured the slops into the thought trowel. Then he pulled the loose board away from the fence so that there was a wide hole for Wilbur to walk through. Reconsider, reconsider, cried the goose. Wilbur paid no attention. He stepped through the fence into his yard. He walked to the trowel and took a long drink of slops, sucking in the milk hungrily and chewing the pop over. It was good to be home again. While Wilbur ate, Lurvy fetched a hammer and some eight penny nails and nailed the board in place. Then he and Mr. Zuckerman leaned lazily on the fence, and Mr. Zuckerman scratched Wilbur's back with a stick. He's quite a pig, said Lurvy. Yes, he'll make a good pig, said Mr. Zuckerman. Wilbur heard the words of praise. He felt the warm milk inside his stomach. He felt the pleasant rubbing of the stick along his itchy back. He felt peaceful, happy, and sleepy. This had been a tiring afternoon. It was still only about four o'clock, but Wilbur was ready for bed. I'm really too young to go out into the world alone, he thought, as he lay down.
Wow, this is great. Um, that was chapter three of Charlotte's Web. Uh, it actually reminds me of uh, growing up myself without uh, parents or like anybody scratch my back or give me more milk. <laughs> but anyways, it's it's a metaphor, I think. But uh, it's a really great book. Um, I'm really enjoying reading this. I'm going to finish it within a day or two. I encourage you to uh, read along with me. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. And uh, thanks for watching.